I'm Delta Work, and it's time for another episode of Very Delta. Her look is definitely polished and definitely fabulous. Mariah Balenciaga is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta, a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get Very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who likes a little ice in her faux gelée. But first, let's get into some things that are Very Delta. Go off Delta! I love emojis. I use emojis for every conversation, for every Instagram post, TikTok post. I use them in emails, sometimes in professional emails, even though they're not terribly professional. I'm still going to use them. I do not understand this far into emoji updates why there are so many emojis that exist that no one's using and there's so many emojis that do not exist that people I think, especially in my field of work, would absolutely use all the time. For instance, I have been complaining for years and years and years that there is not a perfume bottle emoji, just a little perfume bottle. It could have a tassel. It could be just something that looks like the atomizer is spraying. We do not have a perfume bottle. People buy perfume as gifts. People talk about um, how a room smelled. People will talk about... Um, something that they just bought, a fragrance that they just bought, I would always use that emoji. I would say, look at this new perfume I bought, spray. Look at this gift I think I'm going to buy for someone, spray. Doesn't exist. I also do hairdressing and wig dressing for myself and for other people. There is not a hairspray can. Why is there not a hairspray can? Why is there not a hairbrush? Why is there not a hair pick? Why is there not a blow dryer? None of those exist. People comb their hair. People spray their hair. There, I, I don't understand why these don't exist, but there are emojis that do exist that fucking nobody is using. Who is using an orange diamond? Who is just using an orange diamond figure? I'm not talking about like a yield sign. I'm not talking about like a, 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 I'm mistaking this for a piece of fruit. Like this is an actual just straight up solid diamond shape in primary orange. But what's better? There's another size of that as well. You know what else there is? There's one, two, three. There's probably about eight different versions of a black square. Just a square. Some have a white outline. Some are solid. Some look like they're sort of radiating. It's not like an airplane black box. Like maybe that would be more interesting and useful in a conversation on the news. Did you see the story about the plane crash? There's a they, they found the black box. But I don't think we need like eight versions of that. We also don't need a jillion versions of a clock that says like 120 uh, noon, like just shadows of clocks. Like why? I, I don't understand what's happening at those specific times. Maybe a, maybe a noon that's also midnight, maybe a 420, like that would make sense for people. But like, I almost think there's like 1020 AM or 1030. I think that one, like that's not going to be exciting to put into like an Instagram post or in some sort of, um, an email to somebody like, I don't need to remind them with a picture of 10, 20. They can just say like 20 minutes after 10, like they, you can just say that, like, that's absolutely fine. I did recently see kidney beans are kind of new and I guess they can only have one kind of bean. So the, the kidney beans are representing for like pinto beans or representing for uh, black beans. 
you can tell they're kidney beans. Maybe somebody will use that if they're building a salad or talking about making chili. So at first I thought that one was kind of unusual, but I can see where people would use it and why people would use it. There is another one that I think just straight up only suggests one thing. And it's two people, two figures. One looks like they're sort of leaning on the other one in in gray, like a gray scale, sort of anonymous. And I think that's the anonymous sex emoji. I think that's all you could use that for is to like pop it into it like a, a text message. Guess what happened last night? Anonymous sex emoji. And you can tell people like that. That's that's where I was. There's also a, such a need for an emoji that looks like the forest. There's mountains, there are, there's an ocean, there's campsites, but there's not actual what looks like several trees over the one over the other. I constantly will send someone a message when it's taking me forever to get somewhere or I'm stuck in traffic and I'll say, bitch, over the hill and through the woods. That's where I am right now. I need the woods so I can put that in there so I can, it can give people the visual like, you really went through it. But I can't just put a mountain. I'm not really in the mountains. I'm in like a forest. Why is there not a forest with like two or it could be the same tree, just like like evergreen and then spruce colored and then like light green towards the front or something. Where are the emojis that people are actually going to use? What if you're going to the hairdresser uh, or you're telling someone, I, I'm going to go get my hair done. Don't you want to put a hairspray can? Or if you're shopping at Target, hey, can you pick su- pick up some hairspray? No, there's no, I'm the only person that needs these emojis. There has to be other people. There was a moment years ago where they had like a man in a, a man, whoever it was, someone who presented as male, levitating over a black hole on the ground. And they suggested that it was inspired by an album cover or something. If we're going to be inspired by album covers, Give me something that's like more interesting. Give me like the Squirrel Nut Zippers perennial favorites album cover that's like seed packets. I don't see a seed packet. Where Where is that one? That's more interesting than a man hovering over a hole. And a lot of people say they don't use the the hole emoji. I, I, I use the hole emoji a lot. So that one that one can stay. Um, I would rather see more versions of a hole. I would rather see like a black hole with a pile of dirt and a shovel next to it because you might want to message somebody like, guess who got dug out last night? Maybe you want to message that to someone. You can't just put a hole. That isn't, I mean, you can say like, ooh, it smells like a dirty hole in here and you can post that. That's fine. But what about the option of getting dug out? Where's that? Where's that emoji? You, I don't know what else you would put for that. I guess a shovel Doug, and then I think there's an emoji that might say out, so you could put like a shovel and the out. But you could fix all of that and make it a lot more interesting when you're scrolling through Instagram and you're like, oh, somebody got dug out. I can see right here. This is like a hole with the dirt, the mud, and the shovel. This went in there and dug it out. Doug party of one. There is an emoji. I still don't understand exactly what it means. Again, my mind goes to the gutter and that's fine. Um, It's a building that just says 24 hours on it. And I don't know if that's just to say to people like I was at a 24 hour random place. Um, Not a lot of places that, uh, you know, are 24 hours other than certain gyms, maybe the bathhouse, a donut shop. Um... Denny's, I guess a police station maybe, but like what, what is the anonymous 24 hour building? I'm curious to know what happens there. Is it an all purpose building? Uh, is it a, is it a bank that's 24 hours? Maybe you like slide your card and you go inside that little like uh, area. So you can't be, uh, bothered by someone who is not a customer at that bank. I don't know. I'm curious about 24 hour building. What does that mean? Who's going there and what are they doing there? I'm, I'm, So lost. There are what I believe to be two different candles that you can choose from. There's a a very simple sort of like six or nine inch white pillar candle that looks like there's little droplets, something you would just have burning, I don't know, on an end table, um, scented maybe. That's nice. 
But then there's also another one that's like an artisanal candle and it looks like it's hand poured and it's sort of sitting in like a shell and the wick is kind of moved to the side. So it looks like this is like hand done, homegrown. I make my own candles. You know, I think there are a lot more hairdressers in the world and a lot more customers that get their hair done that are begging for a hairspray can, a paddle brush, a pick. Uh, I think there's more of those people than people who make candles and need an artisanal candle emoji. I don't say they don't deserve it. I'm saying, can we at least get rid of the two orange diamonds and reward the artisanal candle people well with what they already have so they don't need a third one? Um, but I'd rather them have a third one than eight black boxes. But we definitely, I mean, we can get rid of at least a black box, two, a black box and an orange triangle. If we got rid of those, if we got rid of those two, we could really, really make some moves with people who want a perfume bottle and a can of hairspray. And I want it to be an aerosol can. I want it to look like what it traditionally is. There's other historical ones in there that still, I mean... I guess somebody's going to use, I was around when there were compact discs and there's a compact disc emoji. I don't know that people are using them very often other than to maybe laugh about technology. Uh, I, I would I would maybe have a conversation with someone and say like, oh, I was at Kinko's and guess what I saw? Uh, 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 an old floppy disc. <laughs> but like who's using that in conversation? There's not people from these last couple of generations that are desperately using that in a conversation. Give them a bottle of perfume. And you know what? I think it's time for very Delta emojis. And I say emojis because not just one. I think if we did get the perfume bottle and the hairspray, at least that would cover a couple. But there is another emoji that I think we could replace. Um, there is another emoji I think we could replace with something that would be very Delta. There is a red high heel, and I I own red high heels, but I don't normally wear them. My signature shoe is a Lucite mule. There is a mule, so that would be like a shoe that covers here and is backless with a heel, a la Blanche Devereaux kind of shoe. Um, that's very Delta. Why can't we get rid of that chunky, uh, sisal, mule that they have on there that nobody's using. That's like the emoji people post or send to one another when they're like, oh, shoes. Like when you're talking with your friends and you're like, oh, bitch, look at her shoes, look at her shoes. Like that's the emoji that you would send to somebody in conversation to be like, ew, whose shoe is that? Like I make it look like a silver, just a silver, pretty Lucite, simple four inch that is so pretty. That is so elegant. It's simple. It's very Delta. And I feel like other people that are not wearing, like there are people that are going to wear that chunky, that chunky thing. But it almost reminds me of like a bad version of like a 70s, 80s candy. Like, do you remember Candy's shoes? Look up Candy's shoes. Those were cute. They were like wooden on the bottom. This is like a knockoff version of that. Like if you got a Barbie at 99 cent store, this is like Candy's Mules from 99 cent store. Like it's not, it's just something about like the pitch and something about the way the heel goes in. It is not cute. And that is not, nobody's using that. That's certainly not a very Delta shoe. So if we could get a clear Lucite Mule, I'm going to say like a single stack, four, maybe four inch-ish, cute, simple. That is very Delta to have that. Um, we also need to maybe, not a GIF, but figure out a way for an emoji to move. And if we could get a finger where the, the fingers are closed like this and it goes, uh-uh, no, that's not very Delta. And I want it to see, I want to see it pivot. I don't want the joints to move other than here. And I want it to go, uh-uh, that's not very Delta. And that'll be the first one in all of those hands and fingers. It'll be the first one that moves. That would be a very Delta, very, very Delta um, emoji. And, you know, along those lines, if we're going to have a perfume bottle, like a standard perfume bottle, um, along the lines of a standard candle, and then the artisanal candle people get the artisanal candle, we should get a specialty, very Delta bottle of perfume that... Uh, is going to be in a beautiful round shape, probably. Um, 
So you could hold it almost like an apple. And then it's going to have that squeezy little atomizer that's like this with a big tassel. So the tassel will come off and it'll swerve back around. And it'll go like these. See how my earrings like flutter? That's how the, that will flutter on the ends. And you will see it go with every puff. I don't want I don't want to say that this one has to move like the finger does. I'll, I'll, I'll make concession that if only one of them is going to move, we'll make the finger move. Um, but if we're giving out artisanal candles next to the regular, like, you know, uh, Walmart pillar candles, then you can give me a specialty bottle of perfume in addition to the regular bottle of perfume. We need options. We need options. Maybe you want, maybe we should even have an aftershave for people who wear aftershave. Uh, these are all scent around, around scent. I think that would be really nice. And nobody knows what a very Delta emoji is more than everyone who's listening and watching this. All of you who support this podcast and understand what happens on this talk show, what we need, what we stand for, what we want, what we desire, what we require, you know this better than everyone. A lot of these are probably blowing past me. I'm not even seeing them, but you are seeing them. And if you can think of them and you know, we need to create a movement. We need to see by the by the end of this year, them institute some of these things. And we'll know that we have have made change for those of us who are really concerned about this stuff. I mean, emojis are there for fun. If they're there for fun, why can't we have fun? Why do we have to have black boxes that mean nothing? If you know, if you know what kind are very delta, if you know what very delta emojis we need, put them in the comments. We want we want to see what some of these emojis should be. Obviously, you can't really post a picture of them, but you could describe them. You could describe what it is we need, whether it's it's a it's a phrase or it's a a moment or it's a sound or it's a feeling. It's definitely going to be a feeling, a sound. I mean, there has to be something out there that I'm missing that you can see in an emoji that we need. Do you want to see me take a break? I think you want to see me take a break. Coming up, Mariah Balancey Aga on TV's number one daytime talk show. Today's guest is the most beautiful woman in the entire world. And I know because I'm the second most beautiful woman in the world. My good friend, the beautiful, the stunning, the professional, the one and only Mariah Balenciaga is here. Hello, Delta. Hi. It's such a delight to be here. I'm so happy you're here. I've been petitioning. Uh, I hope you yep. got all of my letters. I got them all. Thank you. Thank uh -huh. you for finally receiving them and receiving me. Yeah, they do. Uh, they, they let just like one wild card in. And they were like, you know what? Let's let this one in. You got to shake it up a little bit. And, you know, I'm enjoying this whole throwback moment with us right now. Yeah. This is fun. You look gorgeous, of oh. course. Well, thank you. I knew uh, the company that I was going to be keeping, so I needed to make sure that I like took it up an extra notch. And you wear this to the grocery store. This is this is just how you roll. I knew you stalked me. Yeah. You... <laughs> Every once in a while, you gotta like hood it, right? Yeah. Well, this is the thing is, I know why I love you, but why does the world love you? Because the world loves Mariah Balenciaga. Well, I, you know, I really couldn't answer that question. And if I could, I'd probably be as narcissistic as some of our sisters. But, you know, it's, I think it's all about me just, pre, um, just being me and f going with the flow and understanding that I'm not for everybody. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. I don't mm -hmm. force myself on anyone. I just enjoy being me and I choose to be happy every day. I mm -hmm. choose to be happy. And I think that uh, the people who do enjoy my company or do uh, enjoy me online or my presence, I think they see that. I I definitely think that's true. And I also think uh, that there is, as much as I don't know about it, I, I feel like there is something to astrological signs in a way. Mm -hmm. You, myself, Mayhem, uh, famously Aquarians. Yes. Um, and they say that like an Aquarian from January is different than an Aquarian from February. Wait, I think there it's a scale and then people have their own personalities within it. But there are some very true things like you are one of the people I know who definitely has this nose for bullshit and like you can smell it a mile away. And you can tell people what color cow is shitting the bullshit. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I know that about you. And you're not somebody who likes to get loud about things. We do something similar where we just remove ourselves from a situation if it doesn't make sense. I learned that very, very early on. It's just like, you know, again, um, so many 
more notable people have said this uh, than myself. It's just like, you know what? It's I can't change how you behave, but I can change how I react to it. Mm-hmm. And if, if, if I'm not enjoying my surroundings, I'm not going to be there. That's why... Um, That's including work. Uh, When I was a hairstylist, if I didn't enjoy being around a client, their energy was funky, I would not take their appointments. Same thing with gigs, with drag. And I know that everybody is not afforded the opportunity, but if I don't want to be there, I just politely decline and I'm not available. Well, and I think that's uh, that's something that I admire about you is the fact that you do value your time and the energy around you. And something that I've heard recently is like we need for people to start understanding that our free time does not denote our availability. Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? It's really it's, simple. Just because I'm staring at a wall, that's my time to stare at the wall. Exactly. I- and that's my favorite activity is to <laughs> fucking stare at a wall. That's it. Yeah. I usually might I might put on some background noise, but I'm not really paying attention to it. If right. I happen to be scrolling through the 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 internet or my feed, that's what I'm doing. I don't intend to reply to anything. I'm just scrolling just to let my pupils do something and my mind just floats away into like nothingness. And I enjoy that nothingness. Right. No, I, yeah. I fully agree. You know, since the time that uh we were on drag race, which, you know, in <laughs> Some days it seems like yesterday. Some days it seems like 500 years ago. Uh, you have remained um, focused and interested and um, in love with what you do. You've just brought it to different stages and different uh, and, and expressed it in different ways. And just recently you won the Dorian Corey Hall of Fame Award. Yes. For something that when we were, you know, when we were in Drag Race, people, a lot of us were like, well, what's ballroom? What's that scene? I don't know that. And you were very steadfast about your love for it, your appreciation and how much you wanted, you respected it and wanted it to maintain a level of dignity at all times. And to see that this many years later awarded... It's amazing. Doesn't it feel wonderful? It, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps. It's it's very surreal to me um, because I remember coming up, 29 years old was old to me. Mm-hmm. Like when I first got into the scene and 35 year, the the people who were in the scene that were 35 years old. And I was like, yeah, I don't really see myself being a 30 year old drag queen or being in balls. But then it was just like, there's so many other elements to it. The, the connections, the love, the compassion, the creativity, the camaraderie. It really like draws you in and it becomes a part of you. Mm-hmm. If you're serious about it and you respect what, the ballroom consists of and the roots of ballroom right. and I, I'm uh, to be awarded, especially with the class of 23, uh, those, the other individuals that were also honored, I respect gratefully. So it really was surreal. Right. And Alver- Alvernian, he, he did an amazing job throwing the event. It was in like a th- cathedral style mm-hmm. event hall. It was gorgeous. Wow. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, I mean, and that's the 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 idea of respecting something and saying let's you know let's not just show up, let's show out for this. Mm-hmm. Show everybody how much you love it and how yeah. and how much uh, it does encourage people to be excellent. It does because it's like you know they say you know, drag is for everybody, but the stage and the runway is not. Mm-hmm. And I am a stern believer in that. You can enjoy the art, you can partake in the art, but to have a respect for the stage and what it takes to command a presence or the runway and compete or be amongst fellow entertainers and have an appreciation for their craft, that to me is a, a extra special level of drag or entertainment or uh, presence. Right. And so, yes, drag is for everyone, but the stage and the runway may not be. That's that's very, very true. I, I, I see what that means and where that comes from. And when you see the um, sort of, um, well, I don't want to use the term respect because uh, I don't know that it all is, but the prevalence of people trying to include their knowledge of the ballroom scene in media, um, whether it's uh, television, movies, music, um, uh, terminology, all of that, does it, I mean, you know, I always think when I see somebody doing drag, I'm like, well, it brings visibility to what we do. And that's a kind of the, I feel like the Miss America answer to something yes. when I say it. Because I do often think like, fuck you. Like, you're not, you're <laughs> not doing anything but capitalizing on something. Yeah. That's I don't a, know how that feels. Well, it's a double-edged sword with mainstreaming. Yes, we have more um, um, capitalistic opportunities, but 
rarely are they for the people who actually put the blood, sweat, and tears into ballroom and held it down and have continued to hold it down for generations. Um, I rarely in um, drag race, excuse me, drag race forums talk about ballroom Mm -hmm. because once you put it out there in that atmosphere more people feel as though they own the knowledge right or have a right to it to proclaim something as if they know and so i really believe strongly that just be careful what you put out there because other people want to take it from you Mm -hmm. use it and a lot of the people who are capitalizing on it now were only associated by a friend of a friend. Right. And they wanted it to now, ooh, now that it's cool, oh, I know this. Mm-hmm. No, you don't. Right. You're an opportunist. And the thing is, is, mm, yeah, there's a lot more yeah. to say. Well, and that could be, in, I guess, in any field. Like, we can take it out of the ballroom and put it into hairdressing, for yep. instance. Um, or we can put it into uh, <clears throat> jewelry making or, or whatever it is where people sort of feel like, Oh, uh, I I've, I saw a YouTube video about this, so I know what it is. It's the YouTube clips. Everybody, this the YouTube clips. As as a great medium as it is, mm-hmm. it also is. You have knowledge without wisdom. Right, right. Well, that's why you're here. Oh well, hmm. because we 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 speak truths here. Yeah. Right. That's what you do. Anyway. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate you seeing me. I appreciate you hearing me. <laughs> We were just talking about that recently that when people say, I appreciate you, I appreciate you. And sometimes it feels so like placating. You're like, do you really mean that? You know, like, especially when it's a stranger saying it to you out of nowhere and you're like, yeah, don't pet me on the head and then kick me in the ass. I'm cool. Right. Completely. (laughs) Save it. What's a day like for for Mariah Balenciaga? What, what, What happens in, what time do you get up? Oh, God. Um, Except for today. I'm, I'm a real go-getter. Um, typically, I'm in bed till about 2 or 3. Lovely. And one thing about me, if I have to get up for something, I'm up for it. Right. If I have a flight at 5, I'm up at 3.30. I don't care if I just got in from the club at 1.30. I wash my tail, and I'm headed straight to the airport. Right. But if I don't have to do anything, I'm not going to. But mm-hmm. if I say I'm going to make plans, like with friends, I do. But back to your in- initial question, um, just getting up, meandering, making sure I check all my accounts, my social media accounts, my bank accounts, being a responsible individual, my emails, and then just figure out what the few people I call friends are doing and see if they want to have lunch, mm-hmm. kill some time before I actually have to go to work. And then I go to work and then I'm a party girl. I have a ve- yeah. I have a very fortunate life like of course i can make more money doing what i'm doing but every dream that i ever had for my little gay teen or tween something like i've already so everything else is icing on the cake yeah well speaking of cake and speaking of uh uh saying like going out to lunch or something you are like a a bit sort of unicorn ish to me when it comes to like sitting down and dining (laughs) you know people will say that about you that you uh like you like lightly pick at things here and there, but I've like never seen you like have to throw the fuck down. And that's just part of your gentility, I think. I mean, you really are probably the most genteel person I know. When I, you know, I always tell people like, I always wanted to be a Southern belle. And I'm like, you know, well, I'm from Southern California. So that's as South as I'll get. Yes, but I, I was telling like our producer, Mark, I'm like, you have to understand Mariah is to me the like quintessential Southern elegance without even trying i feel like you know sometimes in drag people say like oh who are you inspired by and you try to inspire by this person or that person i'm like mariah is a realized version of this tale that people say exists that really is who she is you really are that person to me you've always been but it that's what makes me think about like i don't think i've ever like even in a situation where we're eating i don't think i've ever even watched her eat the food it's, <laughs> okay uh so the thing about me i will fuck it up no shade but i typically like to i will go and have like crab leg moments uh-huh. by myself uh-huh. off on hollywood boulevard somewhere and just be in a corner and write I will... this down there's only a few places you'll right. find her right no <laughs> That's where the camera goes. And then one of my uh, one of my, my brother uh, little brothers, O'Shawn, he, he will cook oxtails and like come over to the house. Uh-huh. Baby, I will fuck it up. But see, to me, like just messy food and stuff right. like that for me is not. 
a public thing. <laughs> and then also when you're in the company of people and you're talking, it's like, I'd rather drink my calories in that moment. Right. I'd and rather you do. just drink my calories that. in that moment. Because it's like once I also also once I eat or eat heavy, mm-hmm. it's like I get sleepy. Yeah. And so I like to be aware and be up for the company that I'm I've I've chosen to be around. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like I've yeah. seen you like go, Oh sure, I'll have a, a bit of this cookie and you'll bite it. And you go, Oh, that's nice. I don't even think I've seen you finish the cookie. Because you're like, like you said, you'll rather drink your calories. And also, too, a lot of times when we're all in these settings, it is very often entertainment related. Yeah. So it might be after entertaining entertaining, or before or in the middle of. Mm-hmm. It's just not as conducive. I'll just get my, I'll just, especially if I know that there's a vendor, a food vendor there, and they really want to show their appreciation to the girls. And I, you know, really, I want, because that's their art and their craft, and they really right. want us to try their food. I, I will respectfully take it to go. Right. So if you were to go have lunch right now and no one was around, what what do you think you would have right now? Cra- crab legs. Crab legs? <laughs> crab legs, yeah. That's a lot of especially, hassle. Especially this time of day, though. But that's part of, like, the treat and the meditation of just, like, losing your mind and the, the nothingness of okay. having to, like, really hunt for your food within those shells. Do you dip it in any sort of sauce oh, or oh, butter? Oh, garlic butter. Garlic butter. Yeah, garlic butter. Cajun garlic okay. butter. You know, I like flavor in my mouth. You do. I yeah. never remember what his name is, but I still right. like it. In my you mouth. like it when that flavor bursts oh, in your mouth, right there. You love that. Mm-hmm. Who doesn't? Who doesn't really? Mm. I love that. Mm. <laughs> I can. We really. Uh, we might as well just have like little mint juleps here. This is such a polite conversation. It is. It is. Do you cook? I, oh no. Um, I'm not a domestic person. See. I'm not. I don't have that nesting in like that nesting. Um, thing about me um typically when i've been engaged with a gentleman caller like they're the ones that get up early and Mm -hmm. like vacuum when nobody's been at home or that type of thing Mm -hmm. i'm just no no you're not that girl and he luckily they'll cook they do the cooking and i'll I'll keep them company and make sure that their beverage is filled and that's nice that's nice of you i'm very accommodating let's take a break <laughs> I'm very accommodating. After the break, more with Mariah, 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 Mariah. We are back. I'm here with, as I said before, and I mean it, like literally the most beautiful woman ever. And I mean, as an authority, as like second runner up, first runner up, I don't want to be second runner up. I'll take first runner up. Uh, Mariah Balenciaga, Mariah, uh, successful. Mariah, I don't remember the whole thing. Oh, God, at this point, I don't remember Mariah. It doesn't matter. It changes. It can change. Like, (sighs) Mariah, like, Thickums, Mariah, like, all-star runner-up. Mariah just doesn't give Mm -hmm. a fuck. Mariah, hashtag bitch, I'm bothered. Like, all of them, I encompass all of that. Yeah, you do. You know, I'm just not normally the type of person that thinks over and over and over about, like, all the intricacies of our time on Drag Race. Yeah. Because I feel like it's, like, so many other cool things have happened since then. Of course, it was the impetus for a lot of them. It gave us a platform, and I'm always going to be grateful for that. Um, But there are times when I think back to, like, instances that were weird or um, things that people perceive like we were talking about like cl- they'll see a clip of something and they're like oh i know what happened and you're like actually none of that is it's really it's not even that big of a deal or it was a much bigger deal than you see um do you remember there was a moment and i want to say it was like early on where some of the girls like left the hotel and went to the club <laughs> i do i do okay so it was stacy lane's Matthew, Stacey Lane Matthews' birthday. Uh-huh. And so we had made a plan. We were like, oh, girl, we busting out. We're busting out. And uh, it was myself, Alexis, Yada, Stacy, and Shangela. Mm-hmm. And, baby, we were like, okay, we're going to wait. Because on in the hotel, they have a chaperone for right. us, you know, that are kind of like listening On the out. hotel floor. Yes, just making sure that we don't talk to each other. We're in our rooms. So... Yeah, so we made a plan. We were like, okay, after dinner, we're going to, like, hit it. Y'all tap on the door, and we'll, and we'll all sneak out, and we'll catch a car, catch a cab to, like, somewhere, to a strip club or something down the street, something close. We were in Culver City at the time, I believe. And 
baby, when I tell you we ate and I completely knocked the fuck out. Oh, my God. And they were so over me, and they had a fabulous time. <laughs> and I missed out. They were like, bitch, what happened to you? We tapped on your door. I was like, girl, I was asleep, and I missed all the party. But sorry for everybody after season three. That changed the policy. Now they take the doors to see if we broke the seal. Yeah, they did. So we made it harder for y'all, but you're welcome. Y'all make more money than we do now. But you know what's interesting about something like that is like, I, I feel like when you do contain people, I mean, I get it. The idea is to like get people to uh, do all their talking on camera. On so camera, you, you yeah. Know. But at the same time, like when you when you're there for that long and you're doing something like that, you have to have some little bit of release and like letting the girls go out somewhere like to the bar or something for a drink, even if it's like, hey, you guys go out for two hours. Yeah. Go ahead. It or, really, I feel like you may end up getting some more from them. Or even like rent out the hotel bar. Right. And like, because I understand because they don't want, as soon as you see a group of gays together that don't live in that city, the drag queen community is a very tight knit community. And right. we know each other from other states, even right. before drag race. And so when you see people popping up, you're like, oh, you know, and the gays are around. Right. So they didn't want us to be seen together mm -hmm. because that would have everybody would have figured out we were on the show. Right. Even though they had us prancing around in West Hollywood. But right. <laughs> right, exactly. At out of the closet or whatever. Well, right. not there, but, you know. So it was like, but I think if it it definitely would help with figuring out and creating more dynamic. Right. But you know, hey. I mean that's why the show eventually or should have should have been already in a house. <gasps> I've been a trying mess. You know what? I stopped pitching that idea. I did it like in the very beginning. I pitched a lot of stuff in the very beginning, but nobody was interested and it cost too much. Um you know, oh, they got money now. And they lose control of the content when it's twenty four hours. So it's so, you know, I just kind of I guess not gave up, but just Gave up on the idea that anything like that was going to happen, at least with my voice. And so, yeah, maybe I mean, it's going to happen with these these newer popular girls. Maybe there needs to be a Mariah's Mariah's school for girls who want to be women. Oh, uh, no. Mariah's mm. finishing school. I only deal with women who want to be ladies. Oh, I like that. I like that. I would work at your school doing something. I could oh, be no, nurse. you would definitely be a professor. I could do something. A nurse, something. No, I won't. Mm. No, not a nurse. She belongs. Why are you looking at me like you're that? like, like you're, you're sick the, already? You, I How would you be, be a nurse. I would be the founder of the school. You would be the dean. Oh, I love that. Let's do it. Or we could be like in Greece, where you're like, um, uh, you're the principal, and then I'm the one that's all ding, 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 ding. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that. That's actually, I think that's kind of us right now. Yeah, it is. You're also a business person. Um, you do have a line of candles. Oh. <laughs> which uh, you have gifted me before and gifted me today. I forgot to bring it up here, but um, your candles are epically good. And what's beautiful about them is that they are in a tin as a travel. And for someone like myself, like I really do feel like when I'm in a space and there's a candle burning, that it does bring a piece, not just the yeah. scent itself. What made you get into that? What made you love that? Well, I started during um, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is a, a stream of revenue that I could do where it's like, I don't obviously couldn't be, physically be anywhere that I also enjoy mm -hmm. and that it smells good. It makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. It makes you feel like loving on yourself type of moment. And then also like as far as the commerce version of it. Uh, side of it who doesn't love candles like right. every year people are running to all these big chains to get their their candles on sale that might not really smell like they're advertised on the label right. they, and they don't usually <laughs> or, or it's like just a faint you almost have to send your nose hairs to get a whiff of uh -huh. the fragrance so I decided I wanted to make something that I would like and I would enjoy for myself and then also it's so hard Every time you spend money on the road, you have to run to a CVS to get a glass candle. Right. And then you have to leave it there in the hotel room. So I was like, it makes sense to have a tin. You let it cool down. You put the lid back on. And I was had the drag queens on in, in mind when mm. I created it. Yeah, they're they're beautiful. The the oil content, they're very strong. Um, and they're all different. Like the, they are 
literally specific to their names, like It Girl, um, New Day, Brent, New Day. Yes, I yeah. have one called Oh Jasmine Masters. It's her favorite Sex Siren. Uh huh. Cocoa Butter and Cashmere. Uh-huh. She loses it. Um, is this like a like a, a child's show? No, you can say whatever you oh, want. Oh, yeah. Because I was, just... well, was going to ask you, because earlier you said, you know, when you're pleasing yourself. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jasmine, oh, this this scent, it really, her and I both agree that the sex siren makes you really want to bury your face in the cheeks. Oh, okay. It, yeah. It's, it's that kind of uh-huh. fragrance. And then we also have uh, Wicked Beauty. We have uh, Undeniable, Unforgettable, mm-hmm. and all of them are very intense and very distinctive I like that. aromas and moods. Bury your face in the cheeks. Sex Siren. Sex Siren. Right Cocoa down, we're going to get, we need to order at least six of those. We need to order six of those. Um, I mean, I've, <laughs> I, I, ooh, I, I, I want, maybe I should have a very Delta candle. I don't know what the scent would be. You know, I love heavy perfume. Uh, yes. What would that be, you think? I think yours would be a light note of rose water, but don't mm. let it be too too heavy on the rose because okay. then you know that ages it a little bit, and you want it to be a nice variety. And then I, either that or lavender. Oh, I like that. That's and nice. Some tells me a little hint of lemongrass. Mm. You really have to like play with them because some of the fragrance, some of the notes, when they are combined together don't smell like you think they would. Right. So right. you really have to play Cancel with it. Out. It's like you really have to you really have to you got to play with you it. You got to play with it. To well, see what you really you, want. I would imagine you would like shake them up. Oh, you got to shake and I like mine shake and stir and dip. I like mine hand dipped. When I dip you dip we dip. <laughs> really. Mayhem uh what she told me one time. She likes to um when she describes how something smells like if it something smells awful, she goes, "Go, it smells like open butt in there." She said open butt. She says it all the time. Every time somebody mentions like getting like spread cheek pictures on Grindr or the uh-huh. social media apps, that's what I envision. Uh-huh. Open butt. That's just that, that That's gross. Yeah, no. Mm-mm. It's like I like always like a little air of pun intended, air of mystery. <laughs> There's something that you do, part of your gentility, part of what I love, that's always off the cuff. It doesn't involve thought. It's just it's because it comes from your heart. Is first of all, I you generally will refer to people in in endearments, and uh, especially if you if you are very comfortable around them, yeah. and they're always based feline. So it'll be like, oh, hey, pussy cat, or you know, hey, puss. Like that's like a comfortable thing. But then sometimes when you really know somebody, it will change. And I remember oh, yeah. when we first you first moved to L.A. And uh, and this is also something that side note with with mayhem. This is totally different. But I remember mayhem saying, you know, why I think we really loved Mariah when we when we when she first moved here is because she didn't throw herself on everybody and she didn't expect everybody to throw themselves on her. Mariah Mm -hmm. did what Mariah did. And she didn't have to ingratiate herself to people. She was just around and people were were like. I really like being around Mariah, like she's cool. And so that was like a thing where we knew like, it's a privilege to be around people. It's not owed just because like you moved here and you weren't like, we felt it was a privilege to be around you. We know that it is because of the way that you conduct yourself and the way that you do that. But so when I talking about this and talking about those terms, you'll have special terms. So I remember we were, you were working dream girls for a while uh-huh. and Chad was mother cat. You would say, Oh, mother cat over there said this or that. And I thought mother cat, what is that? <laughs> and then I was like, it's an endearment. And then you would like come in sometimes you'd be like, Hey, how are you doing? Big old sassy cat. Like, and it feels so good when someone says something like that because they mean it. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's people, there's in the South and actually all over. When people use like terms of, terms of endearment, you can tell like with the intention. It's just mm-hmm. like any, it, with any kind of slang. It's like, it's the intention. Right. And even with a touch, I know a lot of people, especially this day and age, don't like to be touched. And it's, it's all about the approach and then your intent and then also knowing how to read people and the room. Right. And I think that a lot of people don't bother to read the room or to even analyze the other person to see if they feel comfortable around them. Mm-hmm. They're just like, oh, well, this is what I'm going to do. 
but I always let people lead with their comfort level. Right. And I don't think that I ever started using nicknames like with people until they I like I feel the the warmth reciprocated right, right. and then I'm like okay that we're at a, a comfort level and I think they know my intentions now right right for sure yes yeah, it's, mean, it's like you'll never if I just met you I'm only going to call you Delta right like I'm only going to call you Delta unless like I'm in the club and somebody comes up to me and I didn't even hear your name right then like well, yeah, and I mean, that's even like a thing. Then you're muffin or pumpkin or something. Yeah. yeah, and you do use those terms too. But like I, I remember uh, not too long ago, you, you were doing something. You were out. I said, where? Oh, well, what did you do last night? And you said, oh, girl, I was just out with the kids, just watching the alley cats perform. And like, <laughs> and it was, a, it was it's, in its way, it was also an endearment because it meant, in my mind, some of the new up and coming kids. Yeah. I may not know all of them, but they're part of a group and they're doing something. And... um. I know that what they're doing is still with under my umbrella of what I do. Yes. I just don't know them personally. And so in a way, it's still an endearment. It's a recognition. They're still part of that. Th- this, the, the, this, this stratosphere, this arena, excuse right. me, the arena. And when I know your na- first name basis and you're, we're having cocktails together and you're allowed to be me, see me in my relaxed zone. That's when you're in my stratosphere right. of comfort. Um, but until then, no, um, <laughs> you're like one <laughs> until that what? Yeah, no. no. Uh, but that's like with ballroom. Like, um, we talk to each other and we use certain terminology. And I'm just, and then the young ones, I'm like, oh, little dragon eggs. You know, it's like the ones that are still dragon like, eggs. Yeah, like stretching out their wings, trying to figure out their footing, right. and you know, not really safe to be on the cliff yet. And you know, you still have to protect them from the larger, right. I love that dragon egg. Predatory, eggs. yeah, the little drag. Oh, like the little dragon eggs. You know, you you'll often see them in the club, and they'll be either right. uh, trying to vogue or learning how to walk, run, just practicing and prancing, and just having a good time. Mm-hmm. And you know, that's those are the little dragon eggs, the little drag, the little babies. I love that. Yeah. I love those. Yeah, I've I've heard you call like a, you know, maybe there was like a. You know, guy at the club that like is is comfortable with the girls in drag and mm-hmm. out of drag, and you're like, oh, cat daddy over here. <laughs> and, but which also has another term. Like, obviously, oh, we know there's another yes. term for a cat daddy. But th- those references are really they're really sweet. Do you he, have you ever had an actual cat? Oh yeah, I did. Her name was her name was Sweets. Um, she passed in 2016, and I had her. My mom um, got her for me. She, my mom's so weird. She knows I don't cook at home or have food in my fridge, like when I lived in Atlanta. And all there would be with bottles of water and vodka. And but she would like bring me Tupperware. She'd be like, "Oh, so you can save your life, Ma? I don't keep what are you food do in the fridge." I know, but my mom was that kind of person. And so she called me one day. She was like, "Hey, I got a, a surprise for you." And I was like, "Oh, what is it?" She's like, "It's it's four legs and a breeze." I'm like, "Oh, you got me a puppy." I always grew up with dogs. Uh-huh. She's like, no. I'm like, what'd you get me? She was like, it's a cat. She had rescued it from oh. like a hoarder situation and she had to bring the kitten back to health. And I was like, absolutely not. She was like, well, just meet her. Baby, the same night I came home with like $250 worth of cat stuff. Right. And she never used any of it. Right. They're like that. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I, I do. I, I asked that like I didn't know, but I, I do remember you having the cat and there you can get attached so quickly and uh people don't realize that especially when you travel a lot and you have some something to come home to or something to uh there's there's such a responsibility um, even though they like to do their own thing yeah i think um she my mom knew me better than i knew myself i she she knew I needed a cat, mm-hmm. and then also it's like they your cats take on your response uh, on your personality. Most, oh, that's I true. Think, just like kids, your kids take on your uh, aspects of your personality. And she was loved people, but she would stay away from the folks that she just didn't care for. Mm-hmm. She wouldn't scratch them or bite them or anything. It's just like, yeah, I prefer not to be around you. Oh, cats are delicious. They're like, well, I mean, oh my gosh, I'm not talking about to eat. You know the people are going to be in the comments like, oh my God, Mariah. They are delicious to eat. <laughs> uh, with butter, drawn butter, well, and a little th- bit of garlic. <laughs> I think that animals are amazing for mental health, though. I think so. And it's like they keep you centered. Um, Everybody is not meant to be like a 
human child parent, mm -hmm. but it also gives you a place to like put your love and just to feel love reciprocated just without having to have a cocktail or be out in front of a bunch of people. I agree. Animals are amazing. They li literally are personification of angels on earth. Oh, yeah. Maria. Oh, oh, girl. That's so beautiful. Did you write that? How cute, cute. Or did you just uh, think of that right now? Cute Miss Thing, the song from the, the PETA commercial. <laughs> Arms of the angel. angel. Oh, we don't have the rights to that. <laughs> Let's take a break. <laughs> Stay tuned for Read Me Delta with Delta and Mariah Balenciaga. And we are back <laughs> with Mariah Balenciaga. <laughs> <laughs> and we uh this is the part of the of the show where we answer letters. People don't know who the guest is. Okay. So that's what I think makes it sort of better because if they did know in a way they might ask questions that you're like, "Come on. Ask me a general question about something cool." Read me Delta. I don't like general questions. I like uh questions that tickle my frontal lobe. Oh, these will. No, these okay. will. The Very okay. Delta listeners always come through with questions that uh, they're very frank. I love that. They're very frank people. But, but you know what? I, I think that you have cultivated and curated such a following that they tend to think a little deeper than like the topical basic ass, what color lipstick do you wear? Well, I hope so. I hope that they do because I'm really just sitting here talking about why French fries aren't crispy enough. <laughs> So I hope the people that are listening to this are like, you know what? I, I tell people all the time, I know these are not real problems. These are first world problems. <laughs> Bitch, you're complaining about why there's not enough salt on your fries. Like, but or, I said before. Or these... why your stro your drink your diet coke is it, do you prefer Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi? Pepsi, right? You're a Pepsi girl. I, I forgot. I'm so sorry. We gotta Pepsi. get we gotta get to the letter. Pepsi. We gotta Pepsi. I'm so sorry. I will drink a Diet Pepsi. You know, you were talking earlier, what were you saying about like, oh, I'm not really like domestic, I can't cook. And um, I have, people will ask me like, oh, do you cook? And I'm like, listen, <laughs> I don't choose to cook, but I didn't get this figure, not figure, not this figure, not figuring out how to eat. How so to I, fig sure. I can figure it out. I may not master it, but I can figure out how to consume. Yes. Yeah, every time. I'm oh, sorry, real quick for you get Tell to me. your letter. Every time every time uh my best friend Dolores like leaves out of town or she like leaves me alone, I'm like, oh my God, you didn't even leave out a bowl of water. What am I gonna do? Uh -huh. And I'm just trying to figure out how to do because I'm horrible. I don't even know how to uh I just learned how to do like Uber Eats and stuff like that. So, yes. So Told I'm you like, she, you cannot well, you'll never see her eat, I'm telling you. <sighs> and I'm not trying to shame anyone because there are people that, you know, I, I, this might be the moment to say, you know, we should never really uh, make serious observations about people's eating habits because, you know, some people it's, it's other it's, people it's, have they have, issues. you know, uh, triggers. So. But yes, me, I'm just uh, um not capable. Yeah. You're not capable. Yeah. It's not my gift. You know, Dolores, speaking of, uh, is an extra special person. And I feel like in a way, you stole Dolores from me in a way. Um, there was a like the first drag con, Dolores was there. And I remember she was like taking care of me. She was like, are you thirsty? And she would get me a soda. And then she would stop by. Are you going to get something to eat? And then, um, then somehow your wiles lured her in. You do know that you are still her favorite. She Not actually told favorite. me to tell you hello as I was leaving the house. She said, tell Delta I said hi. I'm Matt. I, she was disappointed that she couldn't be here. And yeah, there's your signed picture of you. Stop that it. Stares at me every day. Stop it. I'm so serious. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Hello, Delta and esteemed guest. I've been religiously listening to both Very That and Very Delta since the beginning. Uh, with the very beginning, very, very, very. So many of your guests have been good friends uh, of yours from the years prior and always speak highly of you and vice versa. The conversations always feel natural because of these year-long friendships that you've had with people. My question is, do you have any friends with whom you didn't really get along at the beginning, perhaps even disliked each other at one point? How did you overcome those differences? Much love from Mexico City, Marcelo. Uh, you know what? Straight up out the gate? No, I don't. I don't think... That there are people that I'm friends with that I was not friends with initially. Maybe people I didn't. I mean, obviously you don't know them, um, but 
I don't think so. I, I, Marcelo, no, I don't think I've had to like turn relationships around to become friendly with people. Maybe it's taken longer to become friends with people just because of distance or, um, working in different realms kind of thing. I mean, that could be, I definitely will tell you this. I definitely have friends that hang out with people that I don't like straight up. And it makes it very difficult because I know how much they value their friendship with that person. And for some reason, everyone else around them seems to like them. And there's just something in me where I'm like, you know, when someone will look at you and like, everyone's having a good time and they'll kind of look at you and they're like, and they'll like give you a dirty look and then they'll like smile back at everybody. I have people, uh, not necessarily in our friend group, but yeah. I, especially out of state where I love these people that I've made friendships with, but the people around them are like, ugh, bitch. Like, is like why is she here? Well, it rarely happens to <laughs> it rarely happens to me. Uh but that is that gaslighting type of energy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my friends are the nucleus of their group. Right. And so it's like, you know, you have the protons, electrons, and sometimes those are interchangeable, but those are still kind of like core to your center. Have you done the neutron dance before? I have not. I do not know dance. I don't, I'm, okay. I'm not on the TikToks, but, okay. <laughs> but, and then you have the, um, the electrons mm -hmm. that just kind of hover around and cause chaos and bounce around, those are the ones that gaslight you mm -hmm. and the group and then cause static. So I rarely have those those right. people around me. I don't allow it. And, I, yeah. and if they are, I'm just like, you know what? I just opt out not to come to that event. Right. You kind of cool. have to. And it's difficult because you don't want to, uh, you know, make people feel like there's an issue because you don't personally have the issue. Yeah, no. You just know that something is not. Yeah, but it's, it's all in, to in tone. When I decline because I know someone's going to be there, it's not a me or them type of situation. It's like, no, get your life. Go have fun. Uh -huh. Like, I'll, we'll have lunch or dinner or, like, we'll go have drinks tomorrow or something else. Right. But, yeah, don't not invite them because of me. Enjoy. Well, we definitely, we definitely do something uh, that a, a lot of our friends do, which is when someone invites them, like, well, who's all over there? Oh, I'm definitely who's over who's there? there. Or who's, like, if it's who's more coming? than, first of all, if it's dinner... If it's more than six people, nope. I'm not coming. I'm not going. Um, and then also, I need to know that it's people I've already dined with. I don't break bread with just anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not it. And then if I'm going to a house party, I don't have to wor want to have to worry about my conversation. Who's going to either go and take something back to someone that I said or uh, take something onto the internet. I don't want to have to second guess me being around my friends. Right. So that's why I stay around a tight-knit circle. Plus, I'm also the type of person, if I'm talking about somebody, I've most likely said it in their face several times. So you know, whatever I've, kind of chaos you're trying to create, it's not going to work. This is so 100% true. I've experienced that uh, recently. And it's it's a thing where it's like, um, I've already said this to this person. I've, this, is, this whole scenario has already played out. And when people are like, oh, I'm not trying to get into something. But then you carry this conversation over to like pour salt in a wound yeah. that is already kind of like scabbing over and you're like i thought you weren't involved in shit but now you're involved in shit you know what they call them a carrier pigeon yeah it's a street it's pretty much a, like yeah. a flying like street rat so just look at them that way and then make sure that you keep them outside yeah they have to unfortunately um so second letter we do have another letter um <gasps> what oh girl you know what? You can't Prop. trust Mark. Uh, uh Mark will put shit in something this way, something that way. In these special purses. You know, these purses are fashion. You know, a lady does carry an evening bag. And you were famous for saying, give me my handbag. I got to go. Give me my pocketbook. Your pocketbook. I don't do handbags. Handbags you is do a for a woman of a certain age. Give me my pocketbook. That's like what the kids are saying these days. What would, if you could, had to carry that and only that. What would you put in that if you were going to an event? Um, my my credentials, credentials to make sure that I don't get turned around at the line. Mm -hmm. I would make sure that I had chapstick, powder, a puff, um, not chapstick, lip gloss, because, you know, I wear lip gloss. Oh, I'm doing just chapstick today. Oh, um, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I see. I see. But, you know, cherry. it's the cherry. Mm -hmm. Hi, Delta. So I'm a blue collar queen and I work at the local auto glass shop. Mm. Wow. Recently, a new guy was hired and we've been getting closer and closer and closer. He's straight, 
and I'm a homo, but he's getting more and more comfortable with me in a way that is confusing. I need some advice. How can I determine if this man wants to lick my no-no square or if he just wants to be friends? I'm not going to ask him bluntly. I need to be incognito about this. Thanks, Delta. Joe. Well, I'm going to let you start with that one. Okay. There are a l- this 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 comes I'm going to go a little into the psychological type okay. of thing. Okay, we're so used to straight men not being nice to us. Yes. And verbally abusive, mentally abusive, just aggressive to us, period. So when someone straight is a straight guy is being kind to us, we're like, oh, "Okay, is it on another are they flirting with me are they being what is it are mm-hmm. they telling me am i picking up cues and sometimes it's a straight guy that's comfortable with himself that's just being nice right um i would say navigate that delicately first of all you're in a workplace right first and foremost and so that's always going to get ugly even if he is gay bi or curious that's always not going to be a fun outcome Mm-hmm. Uh, and then let him make the moves. You're comfortable in who you are. If if he wants to take that step and like come out bluntly or even discreetly and ask you to go somewhere or date or even fuck you in the grease pit, I mean, yeah. l- I would say let him make that move. Baby, make your move. Step it on the line. Um. I mean, I think that's very smart. We've had other people that have asked this question. I'm always leery about anybody doing something um, with is going to put your job at risk. So, you know, worry about your job more than anything because um, you may not have another option of getting a job. I mean, this is what this is how you eat. This is how you pay your rent or what, what, whatever it is. You're doing it because you need the money for some reason. Um, if you are going to socialize with this person, maybe you find out. Uh, through other people what they like to do socially. Like maybe you find out that they have been frequenting uh, a gay establishment or maybe you look for them on the apps, see if they're on the apps. Um, I'm wondering if this person uh, knows that you do drag, maybe. Maybe they don't know that you do drag. Um, Wait, you did say you're a drag. Wait. I'm a blue collar blue queen. Blue collar queen, yes. Oh, okay. So I thought maybe you did drag and you worked at the glass shop. You're just saying you're a blue collar queen. So they don't they don't do drag. No? Well, maybe how am they, I reading that? They might they might consider themselves a queen just because they're gay. You right, never know. Right. Or they could be a drag queen, like um, Well, you're royalty in some way. In some way. In some manner. You're part of this uh this whole thing. Um We know how to word drop. First of all, you can say, Hey, I'm gonna go have a drink here at this bar later. Um, and then if they're if they if you, you see that sparkle in their eye, like oh I've heard of that before, or my homeboys have t- or my sister's friends had a black bachelorette party there before, right. you know it's just like you can drop he- cues and and hints back at him if that's what you feel. Right. But if they don't pick up on it, leave it alone and just go to a regular little dive bar that's kind of neutral, and then just let the conversation go where it goes. As you know, I follow a few prophetess uh, um, blogs and vlogs, and um, they're a wise woman. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Sh- you can write a card to this person and say, just wanted to let you know I've really been thinking about uh, you know, our friendship. And um, put in a, a biblical verse. Used to be scared of the dick. Now I throw lips to the shit. And if you write that in there, they'll know that you are a person of God and that you are somebody who's really, really focused on what what you once did and who you are now. And really, that will um, that will really break that barrier, I think, in a way and also make them feel comfortable that you are, in fact, church going, I think. And uh, everyone sees it differently. You know what I mean? Well, just, I say just let them know sometimes people they're. They don't go to a church, but just get on your knees and just let them know you're spiritual. Right. I agree. Nobody needs organized religion. Everybody mm-hmm. doesn't need it. Sometimes you just got to get on your knees and just show that you're spiritual. Yeah. And are willing to receive the blessings. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What is wrong with you? I don't know. This is this went by really quickly. Oh, I know. This went by really quickly. Oh, I thought I was being long winded. Not at all. It it blows by when you, especially like I said, when you know somebody and you're just catching up. Like, 
you realize that I feel like to- the time in between seeing somebody to another time, if you know they're going to be in your life forever, there really isn't a like starting point and stopping point. It's just like a picking up the conversation where it left off. I feel it, like it really is because I think it's been like how long has it been since I've seen you? Like about I mean probably the fall. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it feels like we. I was just bar asking you to borrow like super glue, yeah, and like perfume and. The time goes Earrings. fast. Earrings. Like yesterday. Actually, it was in the dressing room about 20 minutes It was, ago. but I mean, you know, I wasn't going to say anything. <laughs> but, you know, you do. you We, we both come normally prepared. Yes. We are very prepared. Um, Yeah. This is it. I love it. Thank you for being here. Oh, cheers. That was the letter. Yeah, that was the letter. Thank you all for listening to Very Delta. You can now search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every Monday and you can find us here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. And also a special hello to everyone watching um, the talk show on YouTube. Thank you so much. Keep commenting. Keep uh, telling us how much you love it. And if you don't like it, just tell us how much you love it. And that will uh, mean the world. You can lie. There's nothing wrong with a white lie. It's all about intention. It's all about intention. It's all about intention. Um, Also, you know what's very Delta? Subscribing to Mom Podcast so you don't miss an episode. Uh, And also you can send all of your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. You can follow me on Instagram at Delta Work. And now we have dedicated socials uh, for the show uh, on TikTok and on Instagram. You can follow at very Delta. Uh, And where can people find you on social media? Oh, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Mug for Days. That's M-U-G number four, D-A-Y-Z. Why is he? Just because I want to feel a little different. And then you can find me and follow me on Mariah Paris in parentheses Balenciaga. And what if people want to buy a candle? Where do they go? Uh, You can contact me through via Instagram. I love that. This was so fun. I you know I keep looking over at you, but this is a really, really good episode. A really, really fun. I, I don't like saying interview when I'm talking to people that come sit on the couch because I don't feel like I'm interviewing. I feel like we're conversing. It doesn't. I'm like, gosh, are, I'm like, do you want to do, do you have time to have lunch after this? Right. I well, promise you're drink your calories. I prefer to. Gorge well, by them. lunch, I meant me getting out of drag in the dressing room while you watch me drink. Right. Right. And like I said, you drink your calories and I I do them properly. <laughs> I love you, Delta. I, I just want I just want to say that I to the queen that sent a queen home. Like to me, I would have not wanted to be sent home by anybody else. I Stop. love you, babe. Thank you. I love you. I love you. Thank you for being here. Um, join me next week right here for another episode of Very Delta. And until then, keep things very, very Delta. Next episode, bitch. It's Kylie Sonique Love. If it was the two of us, they're probably going to eat you first. You think so? Yes. You've got lean muscle. People like skinless Girl, I'm chicken gonna breast. I'm going to take this lean muscle and run, bitch. They got lean chicken breast. That's what people love to eat. I figured they would eat you first. Because there's more. And there would be more to eat. And that would give me a chance to run okay. away. And they'll just be grazing on you for however long they need to. To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad-free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, a.k.a. Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margo Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. <laughs>